Liam, after such a great result, how's it been having almost a, a free week of training? Yeah, good. Good, obviously. Lots of travelling last week, lots of minutes. So uh, we used the uh, the week to get uh, the right level of rest, recovery, um, but also you know being able to do some work on the grass has been great as well. So lads are in a good spot. We need to transfer that into the game tomorrow. How have you reflected on the Sunderland victory? Did you see a different side to your side having to protect that lead? Yeah, elements. I think what you saw, and I spoke about it when I first came in around clarity in phases of the game, um, and I thought we showed elements of that. I thought first half we showed you know, a decent press at times in terms of what we want that to look like. We then obviously second half and at stages in the first half got forced back into block, which we showed we're able to do. And then obviously we defended the goal terrifically well. So out of possession, I thought we showed real clarity and an organisation as a group, which is going to be important for us. And then in possession, I thought, again, similarly, there was, you know, there was elements where we... Uh, you know, each, each phase of the game, I thought we showed really good moments. Um, and, and each game is going to be different. I think, you know, you, you take the context of the game Saturday and what that looked like, but you also don't have to take what it looks like off the back of a, you know, a challenging period where we you know, hadn't necessarily got the results that we felt we deserved or wanted. Yeah, and having to do all that, did you feel like you did finally get that result that the performances previously had deserved? Yeah, it's funny, obviously, with the performance-wise, you know, certain aspects I thought were outstanding Saturday, certain aspects I think we've done better in previous games, and yeah, it's, that's football, right? You don't always necessarily get the, get the result that you think the performance warrants, but again, I think that the big thing is, is, is looking at the direction we're going in, and again, I think so many of the aspects of the performance on Saturday underpinned what's going to allow us to you know, keep moving in the right direction, you know, sustain results. I think that's important in terms of the fight, the spirit, the desire to defend our goal. Um, the bravery we showed at times I thought was outstanding. And also I thought the, the, the calmness and the emotional side, you know, especially face a lot of corners late on in the game. And, you know, we, we look calm, we look, look quite relaxed. But I think you can only do that if you know your job and you're quite clear. Um, so, again, I thought the, the players did a terrific job of that. And that's two victories for you at Ashton Gate now as well. Is that something you've spoken about as a group, getting that home form right? Yeah, it's not something we've we've specifically gone into detail about, but I, we want to make it a tough place to come, and that that's obviously you know the fantastic noise from the fans. It's you know from us the, the behaviours and the performance we put in. So again, we I, I think your home form is so important. So again, I think that you know in terms of making it a difficult place to to come, and you can do that in numerous ways. You can do it with noise, with you know the crowd generating big momentum shifts, with us in terms of. You know, starting with intensity, starting on the front foot, starting with you know trying to control the game how we want. I think you know, um, and, and we I, th I thought we started the game well on Saturday. I thought you know, early on I thought we got after them quite high, quite uh, quite aggressive at times with the press. Obviously, we should have had a penalty before the one that we did get. Um, but yeah, we want we want to make it a tough place to come. Uh, I think that's really important for us. You've spoken about the travelling that you've done previously. How good is it to have back to back home games? Yeah, so it's, it's obviously a. Yeah, everyone has to do it right. So over the course of the season, it balances out. But uh, yeah, I think especially with the period we've now got coming up, obviously, what we four games in ten days, being so full on, so intense. Again, you know that that's why I, I think the rest element has been quite important this week as well. So yeah, it was a it was a like I say, it was a, a full on week, but one where you know more learning, but also more progression. And you face another playoff chasing side in Hull. What are you expecting from them? Yeah, they've, they've made strides, to be fair. You know, Liam Racine has done a terrific job if you look at the progress they've made under him. Um, yeah, they're challenging. They're obviously in good form. They have a, a real clear identity and how they want to play. So, yeah, they're in a good spot. But you know, I also think Sunderland were when they came to us, as were Middlesbrough. So, again, I think we have to take the, you know, the positives in that you know, we face teams that are in good runs of form and we've stopped them before. So, that, that's ultimately what we'll be trying to do tomorrow. You mentioned Liam there, like you, a, a young manager. He's done a, a brilliant job with them, hasn't he? Yeah, he's done very well. So I've spoken to Liam a few times, to be fair, on the phone over the last few years. Um, and yeah, I, I, you know, I admire that he's got a real clear way of playing and uh, again, sticks to it. I think shows elements of bravery in terms of how they play. So again, he's, he's done a terrific job. But like I said, I think it, my emphasis, as always, will be on us. And in terms of your squad, you are dealing with quite a, a small squad and January is coming up. Have you identified any, any targets or positions that you're looking to, to get invested in? Yeah, first and foremost, we've got a few that are closer to coming back. So again, I think, yeah, especially when some have been out for a little while, you know, like Ross, uh, Kingy's getting closer. Obviously, we saw Naki back on the bench at the weekend and, you know, we've got a few that we're hoping to see in January as well. So I think first and foremost, we've got some terrific players in the building that, you know, will feel like new signings when they're back on the grass and around the group. And then, yeah, they, you know, there's a daily work going on behind the scenes to identify the right, the right, right profile and you know what's going to allow us to, to improve the squad and build rather than just you know get bodies in for the sake of it. Thanks for your time and good luck. Thank you.
Uh, Liam, I think it's about six and a half weeks since you arrived now. Has the job so far been everything you expected it to be? Uh, that's quite a good question. I'm not sure I came in with any major expectation, to be fair. I, I don't think you really have time to. Uh, I think it was it obviously happened extremely quickly, and then when you're in it, straight into work and you know, kind of get cracking straight away. So it wasn't one where I came in with a, a huge level of expectation on anything. I think it was, a, you know, I'd obviously done a, a lot of work in, in the short period of time that I had. But yeah, I think, you know, observing and kind of making your own judgment, your own assessments uh, when you're in, I think, you know, the important bit rather than coming with too many preconceived ideas. So yeah, it's been a, like I say, it's been a, a long six and a half weeks, that's for sure, with the program that we've had. But it's, yeah, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I'm loving it here. It's a, yeah, lo love the lads. The lads are terrific. You know, some some terrific people here. So I'm, yeah, I'm excited about you know the, the start of the journey that we're hopefully going to go on. Every manager, head coach would love to sit here and say they've won every game so far. How do you think it's gone? Have you achieved what you would hope in the short term, anyway, at least? Yeah, of course. You, I'd always sit here and I'd be lying if I didn't say I wanted more points, um, especially given the performances. And again, I think that's the biggest bit in terms of. Now, we spoke to the players about it. Sometimes you have to step back and see the bigger picture element of, you know, are we heading in the right direction to be able to, you know, consistently compete, uh, you know, against any side in this division and pick up points. And again, I think that when you look at the, get, the games and how they've panned out for large periods and most of the games, we've been in a position where, you know, we can take something from the game. I think that's the biggest bit for me where I don't come away from any of the, was it, however many games I've done now, <laughs> uh, and look at any game and go, they were, they were miles better than us. And I think that's the biggest, the most positive thing in that the margins are so fine at this level that uh, for, for me it's around, you know, back in our work, back in the coaching that we do, back in the players that show the right behaviours to improve and get better. Um, and knowing that those margins can, you know, will shift to us if we keep doing the work that we're doing. Yeah, and how have you found the spectators have taken to you so far and that sort of relationship? It's always tough to come in as a new manager and try and build that straight away from, from game one. Yeah, it's, it, it's something that grows, right? I think it, it results help that. Um, you know, and I, I think you saw that after the game on Saturday. Um, you know, the, the connection with the fans afterwards, I thought was terrific and I want that. I want to, you know, like I said, I want to immerse myself fully in, you know, the city, the culture whilst I'm here. I think that's really important. And that, that they, they, you know, I, I think fans understand you're going to win, you're going to lose, you're going to, you know, you're going to draw games. And I think what, what we've started and what we've shown is that the group will work as hard as they can. They'll compete, they'll be brave, they'll do all the, the behaviours that people, you know, that pay hard and money is the bare minimum they should expect when they turn up. Uh, and on top of that, have a level of organisation. There's no reason not to be prepared, not to step on the pitch and you know be able to see what we're trying to do. Um, so, you know, I, I think that you'd have to ask the fans from that, that perspective. Hopefully, they've seen that in games. But I think what what we're creating here is, you know, a, a real culture where we, we're really honest, we're really hard working. And again, I think that that then it comes down to quality on top of that. So I'm, I'm delighted with the, like I said, the, the group of staff are doing absolutely everything they can to, you know, to make sure that we keep moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. If I may ask about on the sort of squad options, um, you mentioned Ross. So are we approaching Ross being available then? Uh, still, still a, it is in pre-season. I think, okay. that, I think that's where Ross is at. So he's back training with the group, but at the same point, because obviously he missed such a period. And um, obviously when he did it in pre-season, I think that in terms of he's, he's in that stage at the minute where we're still building him up. And what we don't want to happen is obviously rush him yeah. and set him back even longer. So again, I think we have to be really careful given, given the time out, but also the nature of the injury. Yeah. So there's no sort of uh, anticipated timeline as such, or is it still roughly next year, start of next year? Start of next year, most likely, yeah, a couple of weeks still, I think, yeah. And um, Cal? Cal's, yeah, no, Cal's still still progressing. He's been on the treadmill recently, but he's, uh, yeah, he's one that's still going to take a bit of time. And um, Rob Atkinson? Heading in the right direction, similarly, he's out. He's not far off from being out on the grass as well, so hopefully we'll see him, yeah, in January at some point. I was going to say, so when you say about with it, it's, it's, Maybe Kingy, but the rest are all going to kind of be next year. Is that is that fair to yeah, say? Yeah, Kingy and uh, Kingy and Ross are a little bit closer than the others. Um, and then, like I said, you know Hayden and and Rob Atkinson are two that we're hoping to see at some point in January as well. Okay. Um, and then does that, as you sort of indicated, that impacts your strategy for January, or is it always kind of a consideration since you've been in? No, I don't think the strategy changes. I think it. You kind of work knowing that they're coming back. Um, 
As with it, everybody wants definitive timelines, me included, because then I can make plans, right? Mm. But I think in terms of you have to be so, you, you, you have to respond and work off of you know, how the players react in their different stages of, of return to play. So, um, like I said, we, the, the lads do some great work behind the scenes in terms of tracking everything. So we have to, we have to be mindful of that. But at the same point, I, again, I think there's, there's certain work that we need to do irrespective of getting those bodies back. So we'll, we'll work to make sure that we get the right ones in for that. Because obviously those guys are more towards the defensive, well they are, the, towards the defensive end of the field. Yeah. Um, I know Ross kind of does a bit of everything, but um, so in terms of January, I mean, you may or may not be able to say this, I don't know. <laughs> Is there money to spend? I believe so. But okay. again, it's one of those where I need, need to look into it. I think you have to do the right work. Again, I think that, that that's the most important bit. Again, I think you know, you, you, the right work might not involve spending money, to be totally honest. Again, I think that, you know, January is such a tough market that, again, I think we, everybody gets overpriced, which you then look at it and is it, is it worth it, the return of investment, what you're getting, you know, the value of the player you're buying, is it worth it? I think you have to ask that question because, you know, you, you wait four months and you might get the same player at a mm. much cheaper price. So, again, I think that there's so many, so many factors that go in behind the scenes that, Again, I think if we can do the right work, we will. But at the same point, again, I, I think it shouldn't be at the detriment of you know the club being ripped off or what you know mm. what it looks like for the longer term. And the loan market is that something you're looking at? Yeah, it's, it's something that yeah, my, as I've always said, my preference would be in-house or permanence because again, I think that helps you then in terms of when you you know with loans, you know you're always going to have to transition and replace them at some point. But it's definitely something that we're, that we're talking about and that we're considering. Again, I think if. Hence, you know, if you can't get the right one for the right fee in January, then for me, then is there an alternative short-term loan that gets you to the summer when, you know, the market becomes a lot more better and, again, you can actually do work that's better for the club. So, again, I think we're not ruling out anything whatsoever. I think it's, you know, Sean and the recruitment guys with Brian are doing a, a huge amount of work. Obviously, we have regular meetings in terms of where we're at and, you know, the st coaching staff as well are watching targets constantly. So, again, I think it's, like I said, it's making sure that, we're quite clear on what we need, but also, you know, ha having numerous options so that, you know, we don't fully commit on one player and lose out, and then you, you know, you're then reacting off the back of that. I think, you know, a really important part of the window for me is about being proactive and doing the work early so that, you know, you can you can be effective in the market. So if if you were, and again, I understand, yeah, things change. Like you say, you you're at the sort of the what happens elsewhere to an extent. But would you like to get business done early then, earlier in the window, rather than waiting? to see how it develops, or you kind of just have to accept that anyway? If I had the choice and could dictate it, I'd love it, but unfortunately I don't. Uh, my, my initial would be if, if, if you can get the right ones done early, I'd always much prefer that because again, I think, especially when you look at a games program in January, you've got time on the grass. So mm -hmm. again, I think having having that done, building momentum, you know, having having people for extra games and extra training sessions. And again, I think that, you know, not leaving it to the mad rush at the end as we know that all happens. So I think, you know, if we can then, so be it ideally. But if not, then again, I think it's like I keep coming back to it. It's about doing the right work. Mm. The loans one's interesting. So remember you said at the fans forum that sometimes a loan is kind of a good stopgap because you maybe have it where you look to the academy, but some might not quite be ready. Um, the one obvious example here, I would say, would be someone like Seb Palmer Holden, who's just come back from an injury. He's doing well at Newport. Um, I would imagine, I think I'm probably right in saying he's not quite you're not quite in your thinking yet, or have I jumped to conclusions there? No, to be fair, I've, I've actually watched some of him recently. I watched his game against Stockport. I've seen the goals he scored, so I've been keeping an eye on him. And I speak with Brian, who obviously does a terrific job. And it's one of you have to weigh up in terms of where he's at in his journey at the minute, the value of coming back and potentially being a, you know, a third or a fourth choice for us, getting minimal minutes versus actually he's in a good spot. He's getting games. He's, you know, building a reputation. He's, you know getting exposure to senior mm. football, men's football, league football, which I think is also important, might actually benefit not just him, but also us for the longer term. So they're discussions that we're, you know, we're having in-house, but while he's in a good spot at the minute, for me, it's, you know, allow him to keep progressing and developing. And, and again, I think he's, he's one that you know, I think is important. We do track him, we do keep an eye on him. I watch him as well, which I'm not sure he's aware of that at the moment. But again, <laughs> I think it's important that he knows that. And then, like I said, if it was the, if it was the right decision where he's at in his journey and it, you know, it's the right thing for the team here because ultimately that's my priority, making sure that the, you know the team we've got here, the squad we've got here is competitive. Um, but they're, they're discussions that are constant, to be honest. Uh, with Naki, um, where do you kind of see his role? Because the interesting thing with him is obviously him and Tommy have 
I'm sure you know this. Him and Tommy had a had a good partnership, but obviously how the kind of the team evolved into the formation it did, it was sometimes difficult to get him and Tommy on the field together. I just wonder is that a consideration for you to have them together, or you kind of flip between them? Like, do you see Tommy being more flexible in terms of where he can play, or is he an out and out striker and Naki's an out and out striker? Like, I just. Curious to see how you kind of see it without giving too much fun, of course. <laughs> yeah, no, I, at, the, at the minute, again, I think um, I've played two up top before, but again, I think in terms of how we play and, and how you, I think especially at this level of course, I think it's quite common now. If you look at teams building, they're dropping seven, eight players low in build-up. You know, you see it on goal kicks, you'll teams, you know, build with a back four, front two drop in and keep just wingers high and wide. So again, I think that in terms of when you look at it, the, the, the game's evolving constantly with, with what you need. So... At the, at the minute, we're playing one up, which again I, I don't see changing massively in the uh, in the near future. But again, I don't think that's a bad thing in terms of having you know two players with that quality and that that pedigree that as a, as options, but also competing. Again, I think that's the bit that we've not necessarily had since we've come in, which I think is really important for any any team that you know that wants to consistently deliver results. You need you need you need it where players are quite clear they have to fight for their spot. So there's pressure on to, when you step on the pitch, deliver on a Saturday, which. Like I said, we haven't necessarily had since we've been here. So again, I think having Naki and Tommy and Corns competing against each other, I think you know, only going to benefit the team and, and also them individually for their level. With the program, uh, four games in ten days, of, uh, it's pretty manic. I know, same for every every club. But your your preparation is always quite in advance in terms of. So I imagine you're thinking about Watford and Birmingham already. Would that be would that be right? Yeah, and possibly Millwall as well beyond that. Um, when you're doing that preparation, how much of that is selection also kind of in your thinking, or is that a bit more towards the game? That's the bit that happens after each yeah. game, yeah. Uh, injuries, form, results. Um, uh, the work we try to get ahead of is, is you know, understanding the opposition, their, their way of playing, their, you know, what are their patterns, what are their trends, what are their structures in possession, what do they do out of possession. It's, it's, it's creating kind of that part of it. And having an idea of what our what we'll need to look like, and then obviously after each game, for me then it's a we sit down, we discuss right. Let's let's now add the detail to it. Let's what's the what's the team that going to pick? What you know what what certain tweaks do we make to the in possession game plan depending on the team we put uh, we pick? So the bulk of the work that we'll get ahead of is is the opposition analysis really. Because obviously you're playing Hull on Friday. How much like at what stage do you then start thinking about Watford's? In terms of minutes and, and things like that, like, or is that in the moment as well? Yeah, no. Uh, for me, I think we get through tomorrow and then we assess and see where things are at. I think that everything has to go into winning tomorrow. I think that, that for me is really, really important. Sometimes you, you can potentially get too cute, too clever, and you know try to think too far ahead and overlook the most important thing, which is that we're able to put a team out tomorrow to be you know competitive. Which again, we've, there's, there's a little bit of sickness going around, which you know we've, we've had a, we've had one or two. They've been a little bit rough, to be fair. I think there's a few clubs now that have got similar things, had it in the family, to be fair. So, yeah, I think that, that brings different challenges, especially this time of the year. You know, people being run down because of the demands of the programme as well. There's, there's so many factors that, like I said, you, there's elements where you, bits of the programme you can be proactive on and bits where you have to be a little bit reactive as well. So there's, that's putting a couple of people into doubt for yeah, tomorrow. There's a, there's a, there's a, yeah, like I said, there's a couple that, that we're, we're a little unsure on at the minute just because of, yeah. Seems to be a sort of a 24-hour sickness bug flying around.